Hey there, Nancy from Metal. Welcome to our 3D shape morphing tutorial. I'm going to show you how to create a simple vector animation in After Effects that will turn into this amazing 3D shape morphing animation. We'll be using Metal Shapeshifter AE plugin for all the 3D. You can download a demo at metal.com and follow along. In step one, I'll show you how to use the shape tools to create masks that morph from one shape to another. In step two, we apply Shapeshifter to bring that animation into 3D space. It's that simple. And in step three, we use the generator feature to replicate, rotate, and further animate our 3D shapes. All of this is done in a fraction of the time that a dedicated 3D program would use. You can use these techniques to create all kinds of fun animations, all made from simple shapes in After Effects. So let's begin. The first thing we'll do is make sure we're at 16 bits per channel. We'll make our new composition and call it Displacement Map. Now, next we'll make our solid and we'll call that Shapes. We're working at 1024 by 1024 for this composition at 8 seconds long. Now, we're going to be working with shape masks, so I'm going to begin by making a square as my first shape. I'll open the mask and click on the timeline. And then I'll add a marker because I'll double click inside that shape and call it square. This will be a fast and easy way to keep track of all our shapes on the timeline. So next we move over to, to two seconds. And here we can toggle between rectangle and ellipse. So it's a simple way to go from a square to a circle. Again, you can go to the numeric keypad and click on asterisk and it adds a marker and then double click inside the shape and we'll put the obviously circle in this one. Okay, and we're going to keep going at two second increments and change our shape at each one. The next one is going to be a polygon tool. We can just double click on the shape, it pops up and we're going to resize it. Uh, we'll just eyeball it and place it inside our title safe area a bit towards the top. Now moving to six seconds, we're going to go and make this one a star. So again, toggle down, just double click on the star and boop, there we go. We'll resize this one down, keep it a bit high within our title safe. Hit our numeric keypad, asterisk. Double click in our shape and name this one as well. Oop, I forgot polygon. Let's go back to our four seconds and asterisk, click, polygon, pentagon rather. Okay, now moving to the end of the timeline, we want this to loop perfectly. So we're going to go in and copy our square off our timeline and paste it at the end. Command V or Control V and tag this one as well with square. So now we've got our shapes all lined up and we're going to select them all, go into animation, into a keyframe assistant and do an easy ease so, the, so that we have a slight pause once it hits each shape. Okay, so now we're going to create an adjustment layer uh, that we're going to stack on top of our shapes and we're going to go into Blur and Sharpen and add a fast blur. We're doing this because we're creating our displacement map for our animation and we don't want a hard edge between the black and the white. By blurring it, we'll give the, um, the luminance values some steps in between black and white that will make the edges of our shapes look much more pleasing for this type of animation. So next we're going to, get, we're going to go ahead and create a gradient ramp. Now we often use this with our plugins because we're adding luminance values and this is an easy way to add more from white to black values in our displacement map. This will give a nice finish to our animation. So let's toggle back and forth and you'll see that our ramp is within all our shapes. And there's a definite brightness in the center and it tapers to a darker outer edge. Okay, now I want to bring your attention to the first vortex, vertex rather. Now, when the shapes transform from each other, they match up 
to the first vortex. Vortex. I keep saying vortex. The vortex. Uh, now, sometimes we want them to kind of match up visually to go from one to the next. Uh, and it gives it gives its own animation between shapes. Now, sometimes you want to sh change that first vertex. So here, we're going to go and see what happens in our um, mask path when we change our first vertex. Now, take a look. We're going from our circle to our pentagon to our star. So we get more of a twist in our animation. Now, let's go back, set it to the top. Mask and path, shape path, set first vertex. Now you'll see it's, it's a slighter animation. We don't have as big of a twirl. So let's preview what we've got so far. This is our displacement map animation and it's actually the most complicated part of our whole job and we're done. Great. So now we'll move on and create our master composition. We're going to call it Shape Morph. And we're going to go work to a more standard size for our main composition, 1920 by 1080. Now here we have to create a new solid. We'll call it Shapeshifter AE or SSAE for short. And since this is what we're applying our displacement map to, we're going to make it half the size of the displacement map um, comp which is 1024 by 1024. We apply shape shifter. Now, nothing seems to have happened so far, but it's hiding in the background. We have to add lights and camera, and then we'll see what's going on. So I'm going to add in some parallel lights, and I like to name them. So I'm going to call this one parallel right. Pick the color that I like. And Put the intensity at 80. Okay. Now we're going to create our next light. We're creating a bunch of lights here because we're going to have our movement orbit around our shape. So we're not just seeing the front or just one surface side of the shape. We're going to be moving all around it. So it's nice to have different colored lights. And as um, our camera moves around, it's going to pick up on these subtle changes or not so subtle changes, depending how, on how sensitive you are to different light colors. Okay, so we're going to put a parallel on the bottom. And here we're going to pick a blue color. Blue, blue, I lied, yellow. Now our last light will be in the front. I'm going to call it parallel front. And this one will have no color whatsoever. We're just going to leave it white and uh, put it pretty bright at uh, 150. Okay. Now, now we want to see what's going on. So we're going to use a null. I'm going to call it, uh, I'm going to rename it camera controller. Now I'm going to use a null to control my camera. It's just a habit that I'm into uh, when I animate and I just find it gives a better camera movement. It's easier once you get used to working with a null. So I'll um, add my XYZ by making it 3D and I'm going to add a rotation here on the X and Y axes. Now I go from 0 to 359 so I have a perfect loop. I'm one degree short of 360 degrees. Now let's Let's make the magic happen. We're going to drag our environment in and we'll fit that layer. Here we'll go in, transform, fit to comp. We'll just squish it in a bit. Turn the eye off. We need that. We need that environment JPEG and the displacement map composition in our shape morph composition. You'll see why. So we'll go into our displacement mapping going to put a height of 50 and here in our displacement layer we we're going to select our displacement map and I actually want to see my shape a bit bigger so I'm going to put it up to 200 percent equally and what's next we're going to move down to 
our reflection mapping. Now here we can assign a reflection layer and we're going to put our environment JPEG. An equirectangular. Now we can toggle around with our horizontal and vertical offsets. I'm going to put a, a keyframe on this for a slight animation on my timeline, which will just add like a little nice extra movement there. Now here's a preview of our camera orbiting around our 3D shape morph. Now I'm going to go to my generator, which is like a replicator. So I'm going to set it at one instance or at zero, go move over to one second and I'm going to add 20 instances. And I'm going to put them distribute equally from center. And I'm going to put the instance offset at zero. So they're all hidden in there right now, but they're all there. I'll go to the end of my timeline. I want to end up with one instance because I want this animation to loop as well. And I go back to seven seconds and I put it at 20. So most of my animation will have 20 instances all my instances or duplications are perfectly aligned up until this point, one on top of another. But if I make a spiral rotation of 28 degrees, they all appear because they're spiraling out. I can play with my thickness to get just the look I want on my model. And I find my lighting is too burnt out, so I'm going to jump ahead and reposition my lights and the coloring. You can take a look at my settings and see what I've done here. And now that's basically all the work that we need to do to get this result on the left. So let's just jump back and take a RAM preview. I've speeded it up and our work on this animation is complete. Now let's take a look at full screen, our animation. So just by creating simple shapes and adding the generator feature, we're done. One last thing that I wanted to point out to you here, you can modify your shape masks and it will have huge differences on the way that your 3D model looks. So I'm just twirling this around, repositioning my star shape. Uh, you can animate these on your timeline, the position of your shape mask. And that wraps things up. Our tutorial is complete. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.